First, I got to finish my Rob Watson uh, epiphany story. We're still at the table with Vic, you know, and, and I haven't learned my lesson yet, even though I've been beat down and called a Yankee forever. And so Rob's still kind of grousing about restaurants up there that's Yankee fied and no grits. And uh, of course, me not learning my lesson, I spoke up. I said, man, I said, you know, I grew up in Pennsylvania and we had like real food, like scrapple. And, uh, <laughs> I said, the only thing I can see that's good grits are good for is holding bricks together. It looks like mortar. And I said, you put cheese in it, it's just a good, wasted, good, perfectly good cheese. And, and Rob looks at Vic and looks at me and he goes, you know what, Vic? He said, there's two kind of Yankees. He said, you first kind of Yankee, they, you know, the ones that come down, they come down for the season or they come down to visit Disney World. And he said, and they go home. He said, then you got the other kind of Yankees that come down here look around, think, hey, man, this weather's pretty great. Maybe maybe I'll just stay. He goes, and that's the kind of Yankee Jeff is. He's a damn Yankee. <laughs> so so, so anyhow, that, that's the story that got me to the point this weekend where I'm sitting there thinking, you know, why does Rob invite me to these meetings? He's, he's been in the industry a long time. He, he knows as much or more about a lot of this stuff as I do. And, I, and it kind of just dawned on me that he uses me for comic relief during these meetings. And then and then I think I'm kind of like his, his, his unwitting therapist because he unloads probably all of his frustrations of, of bad Yankee driving and road rage. He kind of unloads on me. So I'm kind of like the uh, therapist, you know, for Rob. So that was my epiphany, and I'm not going on any more meetings with you, Rob. So anyhow, this is our foliar program. Just want to go over some basics. Uh, Timmy, I know, beat on you all for probably 20-some years about this, but soluble and you want to base it on your 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 re sampling results. And of course you want to use high quality, you know, soluble with low salt index. And you want to concentrate on getting it into your plant, not onto your plant. If you spray and you still have that film on your leaves and you didn't put copper out, that's your nutritional and that's the incompatibilities I was talking about earlier. And there we have that. So uh, here's a solubility chart. We use DKP in all of our dual fosses. Uh, the impressive thing here is I showed this chart last year, and I think Timmy's used it a bunch of times, is this is pounds per gallon that each of those materials will dissolve. So DKP, you can dissolve 14.1 pounds in a gallon of water. That's pretty impressive. And uh, here, here's a common thing I see all the time. Uh, a grower will take DKP, and uh, there's quite a few companies that offer it. They'll decide they're going to put in a manganese micronutrient. They'll choose sulfate, and you get manganese hydroxide, which is completely insoluble, and that will be the coating on your leaf that eventually runs off onto the ground. So some more basics. You want to incorporate SARs. We've heard a lot about that here with Ed. He's got his crop set, uh, agarmoss. And uh, trees are just like humans. If you keep them healthy and, and keep their uh, defense and immune system pumped up, they'll, uh, they'll do better against the disease. And uh, which kind of materials you can use for an SAR? Well, we use phosphate acid. There's seaweed extracts, chitosan, fermentation products, humic acid, yeast hydrolysates, and in some respects, salicylic acid. Uh, the Alltech products fall into the fermentation and yeast hydrolysates. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the, the seaweeds come and gone over the years, chitosan too, uh, and some other fermentation products. You know, sometimes they'll work and sometimes they won't. Well, a lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, um, product uh, consistency. You know, I was talking to Ed about seaweed and how it's come and gone over the years. And, uh, you know, it has to do with what, when and where that seaweed's gotten from and what kind of quality control you've got. You know, seaweed's like a lot of other plants. In some, some instances, it'll have higher gibberellic acid in it, and uh, other times it won't have any, depending on its life cycle. So, you know, a lot of these materials, depending on, on when it's uh, gotten in the quality control, is whether it works or not. So that's why you get inconsistent results. I did visit the Alltech plant last year, and uh, they have consistent product, get consistent results. It's, it's highly scientific and an impressive operation. 
I'll talk about our dual FOSS. Uh, there's still some confusion. What does it mean? We use PO3 and PO4. The PO3 is actually the phosphite portion of it. That's uh, it, uh, some companies have a label that's a uh, fungicide. Ours is ours nutritional, uh, exact same molecule. The PO4 is actually the plant food portion of that. And uh, when you see that on your, your ticket, it's guaranteed as P205. And uh, there we just went over that. Why do we use it? Well, same, same uh, as Ed was talking about. You get better flower set, consistent crop size, improved root health. How much should we apply? Well, we're going to go with seven pounds again this year. Uh, we've had six in the past. I think seven's probably a good number. Um, I don't think we found the upper limit. Uh, I do have uh, that SAR with a PO3 trial in it. I have uh, a good amount going out there, so uh, maybe we'll see if uh, seven's a good number. Um, we got 106 pounds of soluble plant food going in in our program this year, and this is our new booklet this year. Uh, everybody will get one at the end. It's got our labels in it and uh, the program, so don't uh, worry about if you can't see this. I know the numbers are small. It's essentially the same program as we used last year with eight sprays. Each of these sprays um, has at least one SAR. A lot of the early ones with the dual FOSS, since FOSS acid is an SAR, you're getting that plus the crop set. We've got Agrimoss in the 408 mixes in the uh, post bloom and summer oil. Uh, Griffin Green is a 41410 that's also a dual FOSS. And uh, so we're getting, uh, if you would follow this program, again, Mike asked me to come up with a program that's like a bell shape, you know, where the majority of growers are going to be. Uh, and that's what I kind of did. Uh, some growers will follow parts of it, but uh, it's a good solid program. Here's, uh, I just pulled this out so you can see what a label looks like. Again, this is one with the crop set in it. The exact same label without the crop set. Uh, that'll be in the book. And uh, this is a new product we talked about. And uh, the genesis for this product is I had a grower come to me. He had pretty good manganese and zinc levels already, and you'll see that in a minute. But um, he wanted to be in the upper or even over the optimum into the excessive range on manganese and zinc. So uh, I started putting stuff together and um, we used some nitrates here. I did do a lot of testing uh, on in the summer. We actually waited three weeks till I could put it out the first time because we wanted a hot, dry afternoon. So we got one and we took a rear sprayer and sprayed this out uh, at a gallon per acre and monitored it for three weeks to see if we'd get any uh, any phytotoxicity. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're putting out a lot of metals here. You can see seven and a half almost, or 7.4 zinc and six and a half manganese. So uh, the material weighs 12.6 pounds per gallon. And uh, so you're getting a lot of metal there. And the amino part is the key to this. Uh, that's actually a blend of 18 essential amino acids and what it does is it helps carry that manganese and zinc into the plant. That's a, that's a natural plant-based amino acids, all 18 of them. And so the, the, the plant has an affinity for that, so it'll take it in. And uh, I didn't want to use an EDTA. There's a lot of, a lot of research out there. I mean, EDTAs have their place, especially if you're trying to foot out a dual FOSS. Um, most of you know that's a pretty, pretty touchy uh, mix if you have dual FOSS in there. The, the, the PO3 is not kind to a lot of stuff, so you have to use an EDTA. Uh, this is not chelated enough to go with a dual FOSS. It makes a mess. Uh, this is more like a complex. A complex is uh, it wraps up that nutrient, that molecule, but not as tightly as a chelation does. So uh, the rate here is two to four quarts. Um, I've got data on both of those. And here it is. His, there's three blocks and uh, the pre-app. Here you can see I put all the nutrients up here. If you can't see, it'll be, uh, it'll be on the website. But everything is in the uh, upper to optimum range. Remember, the, the optimum range for uh, zinc and manganese, according to IFAS, is 25 to 100 parts per million. So these guys are, are up there pretty good in all three of these samples. That's probably the lowest. 
but this one's a an interesting one i threw that in there just because i was curious but these two blocks i sampled these i mean the sprayer was turning in the row so it was fresh samples and then i waited 10 days the daa is days after application and you can see the results we had getting that zinc and manganese into the plant we went from 73 to 134 basically on the zinc 92 to 164 an increase of 82 and 78 percent and we were already talking about trees that had pretty good nutrition to start with same thing here we got 79 and 50 percent increase this third block this had been hedged the day before so i was actually waiting in hedger trash when i took these pre-samples i was just curious i wanted to see what would happen well interesting enough we, we crammed a bunch of that manganese and zinc in there with the the amino acids and uh the increases we got were 92 and 113 so that was that was pretty impressive now i don't really know what the take home is other than uh, this was this was hedged and it was a kind of a different animal but uh i took another sample 45 days after the initial sampling and we were still 20 percent up on uh, on the uh, zinc and 13 percent up on the manganese so even that far out 45 days out, we still were better off than what we started with, even though they were pretty optimum. Same thing on the second block. And on that third block that was hedged, we still had a, a huge increase. So pretty interesting. And here I just graphed it out. Everybody likes graphs. So, and I know you can see this one. I had a line graph earlier and I changed it. But these are the, the pre-app, you know, three different blocks, this being the hedged block and uh, you can see 45 days out we're still over the initial zinc manganese same deal and this was another grove this was of course not quite as as good shape as the um, first three blocks you know here you can see uh, anything under 15 parts per million on zinc and manganese is considered deficient uh, so we were definitely deficient here we did two quarts. The previous was a gallon. This is two quarts, seven days after, and we increased it by uh, 415 and 450% respectively. So we got, uh, even though these trees were weak and, uh, you know, you always fear spraying weaker trees with uh, high metallics, uh, we didn't have any phyto here, no leaf loss, and uh, we, we did manage to uh, pump them up pretty good. And uh, as I was searching for a final quote, um, I came across this one, tried to be relevant to our industry right now. Victory belongs to the most persevering, and that's Napoleon, of course. We all know what happened to him. But uh, so I'm thinking to myself, mm, what's that mean to a Yankee like me? So uh, I thought, if you're dumb, you got to be tough. You just keep running and banging your head in the brick wall, and you persevere. So uh, anyhow... I think if we all keep our heads together and in it, and keep trying to improve and become more efficient, uh, we could make it through this.